destroying poverty. Destroying. And I'm telling you, destroying yeah. poverty and actually creating general wealth for yeah. the next generation. There's no need for us to live in this poverty thing anymore, man. No, man, it's bad. It's bad. Poverty sucks. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it because I'm coming let's, from there. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, I'm coming let's, from there. Yeah, let's no. not. Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, Esti Klassen. As you know, every Wednesday night, we chat to amazing property investors, property moguls, first time home buyers who share their story and journey with us. And tonight is no different. But before we get into that, as you know, Zaman Tungwa Kumalo is on your screens every Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. And of course, if you're interested in farming and agriculture, we've got Mbali ready for you. That's every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. And of course, last but not least, East Chad Viveros is traveling Johannesburg looking at amazing mansions, townhouses, apartments in Sandton, whatever, you name it. If you're ready to invest in amazing property, do watch his show every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. And without further ado, I am chatting to Peter Muslala this evening, an optometrist. And tonight we see things through his eyes. Good evening, Peter. How are you? And let me actually, before we even go there, tonight we get to see things through his eyes as he is an optometrist. <laughs> see what I did there, Peter? Yes. <laughs> how are you, Peter? I'm fine, thanks. And how are you doing, Esther? I can't complain. I prepped. I literally ran that line, yeah. that joke, mm -hmm. in my head five times. So thank God you found it funny. <laughs> um, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. You're an optometrist by profession, property investor. And just before we get into that, tell us a little bit about what Peter does. Um, Thank you so much, Esti, and um, I want to appreciate you for uh, inviting me into your show. Thank you for coming. I, I really appreciate that. Um, of course, I'm an optometrist. That's my uh, undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. and um, I'm running three practices currently, uh, one in Boxback, one in Foslu, one in Katlerong, and um, I'm also a real estate agent, actually, working for another company in Jamestown, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also doing property investing as a property investor and running you know, sessions and seminars for those who are interested in you know, investing in property. Mm. That's what I'm basically currently doing. And that's, that's a lot, right? You're not about to stop anytime soon. You're nah. juggling all these things. It's, it's too early for me to actually stop. You know, the yeah. good part is that I do work with teams. You know? mm. I do have you know, two optometrists working for, with me. Mm. I do have administrators for administrators working with us. We sometimes bring law camps to actually cover in, oh, especially nice. when I'm really busy. So we, we, we're fine with that. Yeah. Unfortunately, when it comes to estate agent duties, I have to be present all the time and I have to be able to be the one showing you know, clients this and that. When it comes to property investing, it's also a question of teams. I mean, I do have uh, real estate agents that are also working with me or agencies that are managing my properties and so mm. on. So it's, 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 it's manageable. And I'm very excited that, you know, having teams around them, you know, provide that, you know, good trust that one needs in, as they continue to invest. Exactly. And it's very important to have a power team. We of always course. talk about that on the show, you know, yeah. people who are trustworthy, people yeah. you can yeah. trust. Yeah. Um, and this is not only within the real estate field, you know, for you, it, this, this counts um, in, your, in your practice of as well. Of course. Your team needs to be efficient. And, and they need to be on the board mm. because... Uh, I mean, I'm not always there, mm. you know, but I'm there. Mm. So if, 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 if I'm not there, let's say for a few days, um, there sh they shouldn't be anything that is stopping because I'm not present. Right. You know, so that, that, that becomes very critical for, for us to be able to be functional, for us to be able to you know, you know, push and, 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 and provide services that we are promising our clients exactly. to be providing. You said you're an agent as well. Let's yeah. talk about how you got into property. Yeah. Um, in 2010, mm. um, I was in Cape Town, I was already based in Cape Town, that's when I started buying my first two properties actually in the same year. But my journey did not start in 2010, it started in 20, uh, 2008. Mm -hmm. I uh, had some little you know, money that I've you know, put aside and I just you know, resigned from you know, the University of Limpopo from working as a lecturer and I thought, you know, where can I actually invest my money into? From 2008, 2009, 2010, I said, let me just actually experiment on what you know the mm. books are talking about. And I started buying two properties, and uh, the idea was to you know check whether it's really true that property investing makes money, mm. and how often can you make money? You know whether the question of appreciation really does make sense. Cash flow that comes from renters that you're collecting on a monthly basis does make sense, mm. and so on. And uh, four or five years later, I realized this is it. Uh, property investing is my way to go. Mm. Because I've now 
you know, checked and I've come to a point where I've been convinced by results that property investing yeah. is actually the way to go. And that's when I then moved into Johannesburg in 2015 and I started buying more properties and kept on going. Mm -hmm. Just so kept on going. Of course. <laughs> so the million dollar question, can yeah. we make money from investing in property? Any day. Any day. Of course I do understand that there are some that, you know, you know fail to make money mm. because making money is a skill mm. and uh, skills can be learned. But if you really don't know, you, 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 you may think people are not making money based on your own experience. Right. So just as people make money in other asset classes, others are losing money. Mm. The same story with properties. Just as you know, others are making money in properties, some are, some are actually losing money. So I, I'm, I guess I'm in the fortunate part because I'm in those that are making money, mm. you know. And I'm very grateful for that. And, and, and it, it, it is as we do that we you know, become better and improve. And that's why currently I'm... You know, in, in that mode where I'm sharing my experiences based on you know, the things that I've done for the past 11 years, you know, so that people can also invest successfully right. in properties. Exactly. And I want I want to double tap on this because I think it's such a good topic and I don't think we've spoken about it enough. Yeah. This is nothing we've, you know, yeah. kind of planned for. It's not in the questions, but you talk about, pe and you're a mentor, yeah. you're, you're doing these seminars, you're talking and having new people in your seminars on a monthly basis. Yeah. Have you experienced someone who invested in property the wrong way? Um, and what were those mistakes so that we yeah. don't make them? Um, uh, there are a few, but, mm. but what I've learned in, in, in the experiences is that the, their thinking was, as long as you buy property, then you are fine, you are good to go. Okay. They did not understand that we, we also look at numbers. Mm. We also look at, you know, does it make sense? You know, mm. Does it make sense that I need to pro buy property A and not B? Mm. Uh, is is the, the asking price making sense? What is the municipality saying in terms of valuation of this property? Right. Uh, wh wh what's the Lightstone saying in terms of the general market you know, valuation of the properties that are of a similar size or similar structure like mm. the one I'm buying? Mm. So, so, so I learned it's a question of them not necessarily understanding or knowing that investing in property, it's, a, it's something that needs to be a land and, and you need to get to a point where you know how the money is made, made. Mm. so so those are some of the you know people I've seen you know that you know that that have not necessarily made made, made I money. think it's also lack of research um, I mean um, sometimes you don't know where to start yeah. as, as a first time buy you know I, I sometimes give people an example and say uh, when I bought my first two properties in 2010 uh, I looked around before I could you know to see who I can necessarily follow or who can advise me, who can just validate my decision to say mm. you're doing a right thing, you know, keep going and so on. And I didn't find anyone, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So there are some of the people that would want to invest in property, but there is no one who's around, around you know, to them. support them. They don't even know whether there's a need for them to research or say, or they just look at the board that is advertising a property and they quickly want to make an offer on that property. Yeah. And I mean, you do know that um, if you want to make, you see a, a, a board that is saying a property is sold and you go and want to know who's advertising it they want you to buy it you know right. they, they don't care whether you buy it at the right price they don't care whether the market is, is they also want to well. just get rid they of it they just want to get rid of it so that you know they they move forward so that that's those are some of the things that i'm basically learning mm -hmm. as i have teams around uh, around that i'm working with and mentoring yeah, yeah. you talk about constantly learning which is important because i feel like you learn something new every day yeah and just because you know you've invested in numerous properties and that doesn't mean that there is not more knowledge and more you. things to learn what you. are you as peter still learning today i mean it's 10 years later yeah. in your property <laughs> what are you still learning um you know one of the things i've learned is you actually can negotiate for everything mm. yes. starting from the price starting from the offer the bank is giving you starting from you know uh, the contractors you can negotiate anything and everything mm. clauses on the otp can be cancelled can be re re returned can, you, you, you know th that's that's one that's one aspect but i'm also in a, in the process of learning how new developments work right because i'm interested in in, in getting to a point where i can you know uh, develop new properties and have people buying into those new developments and you know renting some out and and, and so on and so mm. forth i mean also I, I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, 
uh, r running my own agencies. Right. You know, I did the full status agent thing, NQF4, and did the board exam. I did the NQF5, now I'm going to write the board exam for me to become a, a principal so that I can run my own agencies. Yeah. That's where I'm going. So I'm learning that every time you do something, there's still something more mm -hmm. that you can learn. There's still something more that you need to actually, you know, benefit from, yeah. from others. Yeah. And I love that you're still willing to continue learning and teach yourself new things every day because like like we just said, you know, there's never enough knowledge of no, this thing. Never. never. And we just spoke about, you know, you having a good team by your side. But besides that, how else does Peter manage a day job? Yeah. Whether it's nine to five or however many hours you work in the yeah. day manage that and you know families at home or whatever the case may be did you just say ish <laughs> uh, you know the the, the truth is uh, you, you feel like you should have had you know many hours on it in a day yeah, yeah. You know, more than 24 uh, I said Come 24 on. is very small <laughs> but but you know <laughs> it will not change so so instead of us really you know complaining or worrying too much this is what i generally do mm. of course i don't do it every day but most of the time that's how my days would be mm. uh, between seven and nine i look at you know new leads that have come uh, that relates to you know my estate agency duties right. and so on emails respond quickly and so forth mm. half past nine then i'll be doing my optum duties right. so i'll be going to practices to look at what we're doing now the good part is most of the viewings that people make is inquiries for them to come and look at properties that i'm have advertised yeah they are done after five okay. so around yes. five six seven. so ideally you are more likely to find me doing my optum duties between 10 o'clock to five, and four or five o'clock yeah. you know what i mean yeah that's that's how i'm able mm. to do that when it comes to property investing the good part is that i do have teams of you know rental ag uh, yeah. agents um, uh, that are doing the management aspect of these properties mm. because in the beginning of course i you know first five years i was doing these things they were doing placement for me but i was doing the managing you know, know myself then i thought you know what no let me just yeah. use the time differently. Yeah. Let them do both the placement, management, and exit interviews and so on of all these tenants that are coming into the property. Right. So that you know makes it easier for me to focus on you know investment purely and focus on doing my estate agency yeah. duties and my optum duties. Yeah. And I think it's so important. Time management is so is key. Critical. <laughs> Critical, <laughs> but but very important. You yeah. know. And you talk about. Um, You've been in the property market for almost about 10 years now. Yeah. It is, it's been 10 years, a good 10 years. Yeah. How do you manage to, how do you still sustain your property investment journey through all of these things that are currently happening? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's always good for you to understand what you're doing mm. or where you want to go. Mm. My property investing journey is not just as... Uh, um, me buying one two properties and i'm and really then excited you sleep. no 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 that's that's not about it. it's about yeah. financial freedom it's about passive income generation it's about finding ways to do new developments it's about finding ways to run as an entrepreneur running agencies around mm. now many of these things are going to happen you know <laughs> we're just talking to these issues but i mean we don't know what's going to be happening in the next five ten exactly. fifteen years so these things will always happen mm. now as long as you can focus on the main goal which is about you know being financially free, you know being able to provide accommodation for many people, being ob able to provide platforms yeah. through which many others that are aspiring in, uh, entrepreneurs, aspiring property investors would want to you know benefit from. Mm. You know, mm. now, now if you understand that that's that's the bigger thing. All these things are just small. They yeah. just shrink into small events and daily right. events and so on. Yeah. So that's that's basically what it's about. So yeah. you keep fixed on that goal in order to, you know, keep pushing yourself on the daily to to know what even short term goals are very important. Of I believe course. I believe that uh, whether you have a goal for tomorrow, uh, Friday, end of the week, yeah. this is very important to have, especially and not just in property investment in life yeah. in general, because that keeps you going. 100 percent. Right. And, um, you know, we spoke about how the pandemic and these things happen and some of these things are out of our control. Yeah. And then we need to kind of adjust and, and realize, okay, now it's happened. What now? How do we carry on yeah. living and carry on investing? Yeah. And, um, you know, property investors, the pandemic actually did you guys good, you know? Yeah, <laughs> not necessarily. Right. I, I mean, I've had one of, of the many tenants that we do have. Mm. We've got one that, you know, was not able to actually remain in our 
units okay because of you know the impact of the pandemic you know mm. they couldn't afford to continue to pay the rent mm. i guess they needed to downgrade or they needed to move out and so on but you know as they move out somebody else takes you know, the, the place you know what mm. i mean yeah so it, it, it has not always been so bad but it also has not always been so good mm. you know um, there, are, there are lots of other opportunities that came because of, of this pandemic. Exactly. Those that couldn't afford to, you know, maintain their own mortgages, pay for whatever they felt maybe they needed to sell and so on. Mm. And I mean, each time they want to sell, uh, you know, we, we are available to say we do have maybe some cash some, to assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll buy the property you know, at a, a little lower price compared yeah. to what the market is asking exactly. for. You see and what I, guess, I mean? Yeah. Because that's 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 all about you know, preparation and knowing mm. that you know when certain things are going to be happening or these things are going to be happening, the likely impact is we'll have lots of properties all over the place, right? And then we can get them at discounted prices and be able to invest and move forward. Exactly. You know, just two weeks ago, my wife and I closed two more deals. You know, because of the very same thing. Yeah. So I'm saying. Um, it, it it can always be you know the positive part and, and then, yeah. yeah but 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 the good part is you, you must focus on the bigger picture right because these events are going to continue i okay. really don't know but maybe in the next five years we may find also opportunities where you, you know if yeah. we have money somewhere else or equity in many of our properties mm. we can quickly unlock it buy other properties of as course. we go yeah it's a chain reaction keep you know keep buying 100 percent so, Peter, you've spoken about, you know, starting your own agency and you've done your own research. You've even gone for courses to do that. I would like to find out because you've, you, we spoke a lot about having a goal yeah. in, this, in this industry, yeah. right? Why is one of your goals to own an agency? Many a times it's very important for you to understand your personal abilities mm. and your personal ambitions. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Mm. I love to own a business, run a business, control the business, and so forth. Mm. So as an agent, I'm an employee. But as an owner of agencies, I'm the employer, yeah. I'm the yeah, entrepreneur yeah. part. Mm. That, that's how it comes in. So um, my, my goal is to actually you know, own in my own agency and then maybe franchise it yeah. and have other people you know, joining in there. But the second reason is because I want to provide platform mm. uh, where many of our brothers and sisters can actually come into property investing. Mm. Uh, there's still lots of many young black and, and, and uh, brothers and sisters that don't think property investing it's it's it's, it's a way to go. Yeah. Because they were not exposed. Yeah. And, and then it's primarily because our parents were not exposed. Exposed exactly. So now that some of us are exposed into these things. We need to actually find ways in which we can bring them as easily as possible. Mm. So owning an agency then becomes a platform through which we, they can come in, become interns, become full status agents, become principals, and then own their own agency. Own, exactly. That's that's what I'm actually looking at. Mm. It's part of bridging the gap between you know those that are not in the industry and those that can actually come into the industry. This that's why ecosystem I'm doing of our people continuously, you know, making money. Hundred percent. And um, and I think it's so important because we spoke about this just before the show. Yeah about how our people look at property and they're just like, why? Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, they question this thing property and I think the only way to eventually or kind of find out is to just do it for yourself. 100%. Because like we said, you can still go do it, but then do it wrong. You know? And, mm, sorry. Uh, and, and my thinking is, uh, uh, if, if we have come into property and we have found that property investing is, is good mm. and money can be made and mm. opportunities can be created throughout the value chain, by yeah. the way, throughout yeah. the entire value chain, from being owning agencies, being agents, you know, being uh, landlords, you know, and, yeah. and so on, throughout the entire value chain, chain, then we must be able to open that platform for those who don't think it is. Right. Yeah. So that they can come into the picture and they can decide where to place themselves. Exactly. Whether they want to own their own agencies or just work as agents, work as property investors or work as contractors who are ref refurbishing yeah, yeah. this thing or work in new development. So so, so that's, that's what this is about. Mm. Providing a platform through which others can enter the market right. and decide to actually dominate spaces mm. where you know this market is going. On that note of new developments, that's another thing Peter wants to do. Of course. <laughs> You want to go into new develop, big developments as well, yeah. right? Develop, and let's talk a little bit about that because my follow-up question was going to be, what is your property goal? Yeah, um, I've, I've I've seen that uh, you know, property investment has has both you know, great uh, benefits, mm. you know, tax uh, in in terms of tax uh, advantages, 
but also you know, the fact that you are able to provide lots of accommodation for others that yeah. do not have. Yeah. It's, it's one of a fulfilling thing, you know. Uh, and also the fact that, you know, you are able to make money in the process. Yeah. You know, you develop it, you sell it immediately, and then you cash out, and exactly. then you move to the next development. Yeah. So I, I, I have seen that that's, that's the, there are these opportunities that exist. Mm. And I'm currently positioning myself in that direction. Right. Because I want to actually get a sense of how this is done, what are the requirements, and what, what do we need to look you know, mm. for, look at, and what people are, which people are already in there that can actually mentor me into that space. Right. So that as I get into that space, I'm not only trying, you know, with an intention to uh, fail and learn from my mistakes, mm -hmm. but rather I'm using their experience, using their wisdom, using their skills and so on to be able to advance as quickly as mm -hmm. I can and, you know, provide accommodation for many people as possible. We actually recently spoke about this leveraging of people. And it's so important to do that. And of course. Uh, you're not, you know, it's it's knowledge that they have. Of and course. they're literally giving it to you for free. So leverage off that, learn from that, and then automatically you grow. Even as well. if they charge you for that, mm. remember for them to accumulate that kind of knowledge and experience, they pay they for it. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the same is true with me. I've made my own mistakes, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, sometimes I give people an example about my very first property mm. when I bought it and I realized that, actually it was the second one, I bought it and then on the OTP there was a clause that I need to take occupation when guarantees are actually granted. Mm. In the event I don't, I'm accepting to actually pay around 11% uh, uh, interest on the balance of the oh, wow. purchase price. Mm. All those things at the time were just very exciting. And what was exciting was the fact that I'm buying properties. Yeah. But, but I did not understand the financial implications mm. and the real implications of, of, of doing what these clauses are saying right. I should do. And, and guess what? A week before the property registers, the conveyancer sends me a bill. And it says, you know, we are looking for around 26 to 20, uh, 29,000 rent because you did not move into the property. And it took around six months before they registered. And I'm thinking, what is this for? They yeah. say, that loss. That yeah. loss. Mm. So I've paid my school fees in terms of understanding yeah. why reading an OTP and understanding it is important. It, or yeah. finding somebody who can actually advise you to do mm. to do the same is very important. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I give an, another example concerning uh, the fact that in one of our properties, we just decided to close it. We were very excited about getting the title deed. Mm. We did not realize that at the time when we want to take equity out of the property, we will need to refinance it, then register a new bond and so on right. and so on. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Had we left it open, at least the amount to the bond that we initially registered would be easily accessible for us to take out without re-registering another one. Right. You know what I mean? Or even if we were to register another, at least it's just an extra money above the existing bond, mm. which may not be as expensive as registering the whole you know right. bond and so on so all these things are what uh, lessons i've learned and i've paid, paid. my school fees paid so what dues. does it mean if i have to be actually teaching somebody to avoid the same i mean i should be fairly compensated you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> <So paid>. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we talk about your property goals and i want to find out from you what is your own personal goal and I believe that our own journey and our own story contributes yeah. to what we're doing out there. Yeah, for us, we, we want to actually become financially free. Mm. And that speaks to, um, you know, our passive income being able to, you know, cover our general expenses. Whether it's luxury life, or whatever, mm. it doesn't really matter. As long as the money we are able to actually receive passively, we will be able to cover that. But also, I've already spoken about the new development things and owning agencies and so on. What do I want? We want to create uh, platforms. We want to create uh, 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 opportunities for people to enter into this industry. Mm. We want to be able to offer accommodation in the process, mm. but we want to also be able to make money in the process. That's what your yeah. uh, goals are about. Fairly so. I like how you, you don't say, what do I want? I like how you use the word we all the time because you're not, <laughs> you're not doing this alone. Right? Yeah. You yeah. have your family. Of course. I love how you say that we want financial freedom. Of course you do, but if you do it as a unit, you know, and that's... And, and it's always easier or mm. much better, at least from where I'm sitting, to mm. work with my partner to, to do this thing. Yeah, because many of these decisions we have to discuss together because they may have, you know, far-reaching financial implications on them. Whether I'm still alive or dead, you know what I mean? They're so still affected. Better. Of course. Exactly. So that's, that becomes very important for us to discuss this in together. Yeah. But also in the event that I, I'm gone early, mm. you know, 
at least they will have the heart of what I always wanted to do. Exactly. And then my kids can always take the spirit and be able to, you know, continue, your continue legacy. with the, the legacy that exactly. they're now we're building. And yeah. that's what we're doing. We're building generational wealth and a legacy. Destroying poverty. Destroying. And I'm telling you, destroying Ooh. poverty and actually creating general wealth for yeah. the next generation. There's no need for us to live in this poverty thing anymore, man. No, man, it's bad. It's bad. Poverty sucks. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it because I'm coming let's, from there. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, I'm coming let's, from there. Let's, yeah, let's no, not. No, okay, let's, let's not, not even that. look that way. It's hectic. You talk about, you know, um, and we just spoke about you need to obviously also be compensated for your knowledge. Yeah. And you are sharing your knowledge through the seminars and teaching other people, you know, people um, to how they can be more like you. Yeah. Uh, how they can even be better, better, than, than, better, than, better than what we yeah. are, you know. And um, I, because this is the first time home buyer show, I want to know about common first time home buyer mistakes that you've seen, yeah. you know, um, educating these people on the platforms, because yeah. um, you're also a mentor yeah. to a few people. Um, of course, people don't understand the importance of these contracts, you know, the OTP we talk about. Yeah. And I guess many people possibly in your show should mention that mistake. Uh, when people buy properties, they're very excited. Mm. It's their first property. Remember, maybe in their family, no one ever bought a property. If they ever did, they bought it at the time when their parents were going for retirement. Now, this one is 22, it's 24, it's 26. Yeah, and, we're buying. and it's very excited that it's buying property. Mm. And all they want is, I love that property, and therefore I want to just sign on the dotted line. They don't understand what they're signing on the dotted mm. line. So I say to people, always read the, the OTP. If you don't understand it, find another opinion from another agent or another other, another conveyance and so on. But yeah. just find somebody who can actually explain it in simple terms yeah. and make you understand the process that are giving you an unnecessary obligation. Right. Because some of these clauses can be cancelled. Okay. So that you don't have this unnecessary obligation. That's one. But number two, people think they are buying a property mm. while they are buying a neighborhood. Mm. So... Uh, it's very easy for you and very tempting for you to feel like, you know what, I own this wonderful property in this street, I own this wonderful property in this area and so mm. on. But I can tell you it's going to be very difficult for you to sell it to investors. Mm. Investors are looking for a property that is not so wow in a wow neighborhood. Right. Because they can even demolish that same property and, and build a very wonderful property and sell and make money in the yeah. process. So understand this, we are buying a neighborhood not just the property. Mm. So if the neighborhood is going down, maybe you need to run away and look for other neighborhoods yeah. around. If a neighborhood is actually going up, that's where you need to come in as quickly as possible and let your property appreciate quickly, because it will mm. appreciate quickly as it can, and then you are able to take out equity and invest in other properties going forward. Mm. I mean, uh, earlier I was making you aware that uh, one of, uh, actually two of the properties that we bought very early in, in 2010, one of them, has now grown by 112 percent. Yes, that's just 10 years. So it has doubled its value, and then there's 12 percent more. The other one has grown by 90 percent. Mm. So, so it's because the neighborhood it's actually appreciated. It's a good neighborhood. Yeah, not and just even the that, property. Yeah, even that, mm. we we're not offering a full price. Because that's the way we progressively make money in the process. You can't just offer the asking price. Yeah. They're asking for that, but it's you who has the right to make an offer. It's your money yeah. you are offering. Tell them what you are offering. <laughs> Let them reject it or accept it. Right. That's, that's it. You know mm. what I mean? So many of my uh, uh, first-time home buyers, they're just excited. They just offer the full price. Now they send these things to the bank, and the bank, one bank just comes in and says, we're going to give you prime plus two. You know what they're interested in? They're just excited the fact that the bank is going to give me a bond. Right. But they're not interested in at what rate right. is this bank giving me this bond. Mm. Now, th th that's how we feature in as mentors. Mm. Because immediately when you're very excited and your emotions are all over the place, you come to me and you say to me, I got this deal and the bank is going to give me this. I look at those figures and say, no, your numbers don't make sense. Uh, call the mortgage originator, the banker. Ask, let them know, uh, uh, tell them mm. that you, you have a good credit scoring, your affordability is quite good. And to be, uh, for them to give you prime plus two or plus three does not make sense. Therefore, they need to review it. Otherwise, we will go to the next bank. Mm. I think that's the issue yeah. with a lot of first time home buyers. We don't know who to go to when we see these things and we're like, oh, who do we ask? You know, And I think we also think that these financial institutions aren't, peop aren't easily accessible and we can't easily talk to them. Yeah. Uh, because. And that's why it's so crucial to have a mentor. Yeah, and, 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 and I, uh, it's important for you to understand that the way you do business, 
it's not necessarily how others are doing it. Yeah. Many of the people that are experienced are doing it much better than they are. And with many of these banks, you know, if you cannot go into uh, get a, a banker that you can speak to, there are lots of mortgage originators all over the place. Mm. Speak to them. Mm. If you have a sense that this one is not necessarily assisting, mm. find another one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's your money. It's your money. It's your yeah. own investment <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> so, so that's very important for people to understand this part. Mm. That it's your deal, it's you who's making the deal. Mm. And therefore, if you're making a deal, you should be able to get a favorable return. Banks are in the business of making money. Yeah. If they are giving you prime plus, they know they are just, you know, chowing your money. And they're very excited about that. Very. But you mustn't be tempted to be excited unnecessarily. And I, th yeah, I think first time homebuyers, we also, as first time homebuyers, we shouldn't be too naive yeah. going into this process. It is exciting. It is an exciting process. Let's not take that away from yeah, it, Peter, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, of course. because it really is. You know, when you sign that line, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah, of course. And you, you don't expect the worst. Of course. You really don't. You are thinking everyone is looking for your own benefit. Exactly. And in reality, each person is looking for their own benefit. Yeah. The agent is number one, is looking for their own commission. Mm -hmm. The seller is looking for their own you know, money. Yeah. The bank is looking for their own you know, uh, interest. Yeah. Uh, and mortgage originator is looking for opportunities to you know, close the deal so that the bank can pay them and Very so true. forth. So everyone is looking for their own interest. You also need to look for your own interest. I'm not saying don't get excited. Actually, get excited. Yes. The same was true with me. I was very excited. That's why I did not see those clauses. Mm. Or I did not understand those clauses. Mm. But if you have an opportunity to find the Peters, the mentors, and the other people so, you know, that can walk you through a deal, I mean, take that opportunity. Of course. Even in my mentorship session, I also do sport mentorship. As in, uh, you bring a deal, we look at the deal, you pay me whatever amount that you need to pay me mm. for that deal. Mm. And after the deal, we are gone. Yeah. Because my thinking is I need to save you as much uh, thousands as possible. Yeah. But at least you must just give me some, some, some also to, to sleep at night. <laughs> to sleep nice at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's exactly where I want to leave it, Peter. I think that especially, you know, in the spirit of first-time home buyers, yeah. be excited about this, right? Be excited. Be excited, but also be cautious. Of course. And, and take help from those around you, from those who can, if you can afford it. I think what's so key and what I've learned on the show is that if anything, if you can afford to pay for a mentor, pay. Yes. And it will <laughs> save you lots of thousands. Exactly, in the long run. It will save you. No, even in the first deal. <laughs> I say to Even people, in the short run. The first deal. In the first deal. Mm. If you can come to our mentorship session, I can tell you, mm. you will save over 20,000 rand. Mm. I'm going to just charge you 500 rand for you to end, uh, come into our mentorship session. But in your first deal, yeah, you, you will save over 20,000 rand. I can yeah. guarantee you that. So we are just, talk just not talking now. We are talking throughout your entire life. And the experience you will then get, mm. you can use it for your entire life. Right. You can pass the information to your children, your partner, and everybody else. Mm. But you got it exactly. for little less 500 points. And you can avoid making these mistakes. Make these costly mistakes. Losing 20K is Those are a lot painful in these ones. Mm. You know? So Peter, just thank you. But just before we, we end off, and I think this is um, key, especially for first-time home buyers, yeah. we talk about be excited, we talk about finding your property, but let's talk about that journey when looking for mm. that perfect property, right? Mm. Maybe let's just narrow it down to three. If there are three key things that is a big no-no yeah. when looking for your first property, yeah. what are those three things uh, that can literally make you as Peter say, mm. no, I'm not, it, this is a bad investment? Okay, Remember, I'm a property investor. Yes. So I'm looking at opportunities for making money. Right. Number one, if I look at the property and I'm thinking the repairs that needs to be done in this property um, will lead me to overcapitalize on the property rather than making money out of the property mm. and not buy it. Yeah. Practical example, the roof is leaking. A lot of areas of this roof, uh, roof is leaking. Now to replace a roof, <laughs> it's an I mean a leak. Yeah, yeah. Somebody tells you, you know what, the plumbing is not necessarily working because you know, when the building cement got in there and therefore, you know, it's no longer working and not of your time is cement. Plumbing job can actually be very expensive. Yeah. So those are some of the things I just think, you know what, maybe maybe that's not that's not worth investing. Mm. Number two, it's a question of numbers. I'm investing to make money. Yeah. I'm not donating. Mm. I'm <laughs> investing to make money. I need to be thinking, as I make this offer or this purchase price, what will be the implication on the bond? What will be the implication in terms of the expenses that relates to this property? Right. And what income am I going to get in this property? Yeah. If I work on my numbers and I realize my numbers are not making sense, I do one or two things. Mm. Number one, 
I review the offer and represent it. Okay. Number two, I walk away. Because if it doesn't make sense, I can't afford to keep paying you know, more money onto the property and so forth and so forth. Mm. The, the last one relates to uh, the nature of funding. You know, sometimes you go into uh, property and you realize that you're excited, you're thinking you'll be able to get funding from the bank. Yeah. And for some reason, the bank doesn't give you funding. And you realize you need to be getting funding from other investors. Mm. Now, getting funding from other investors can be easy, but it's more costly than getting money from the bank. Right. So, because funders or private funders, they want their money back. They want benefits in terms of interest yeah. and profit, but they also want a stake. Mm. So, if I look at the property and my sense is this, uh, you know, this deal is not going to give us enough, you know, mm. effect, you know, all of us as potential investors. Yeah. I may have to say, you know what, maybe for now, I'll let it go. Right. Let's go. Yeah, okay. And I think that's key to, to know as, and not just property investors, first-time homebuyers as well. It's very important to see if, because I, and also as first-time homebuyers, to know what your long-term goal is within property. Because that first home that you buy could actually just be a, property investment of course. and then you continue buying you know it 100%. doesn't necessarily need to be your home yeah and that's so key so thank you so much peter for sharing those facts with us today your time Misty. thank <laughs> you so much for thank you time. so much so our viewers at home thank you so much you know that we are live every wednesday night at 8 p.m do not miss this